Hello everyone, my name is Megan Ellsworth here at RoofersCoffeeShop.com and I am back again for a roofing influencer response with Trent Cotney. Hi Trent. Hey, how's it going? Going good. Um, this one's topic is pretty interesting. It's all about reviews and the question is, what is new with reviews and software solutions that are helping roofing companies get more reviews, keep their good reviews and handle bad reviews? So let's dive in, Trent, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, so I think there's a lot of great new software out there uh, and companies that uh, engage in these kind of reviews. You know, I see them when I go to trade shows or I hear about them through Rivers Coffee Shop or other places. And I think it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to interface with your customers and get an understanding of where you are customer service wise, right? And I'm a big believer that, you know, great customer service eliminates the need for lawyers, which is bad for me, but it's it's good for contractors, right? So I think if you use these third parties, it gives you a, uh, an opportunity to not only, you know, be able to get more positive reviews, but to try to end run any of the negativity before it results in something bad that's on the internet or social media or elsewhere. So I think it's a great idea. Obviously, you know, reputation management is critical. We, we live in a world where, you know, I, I read a stat, 76% of every consumer out there looks at reviews before they make a choice. So if that's the case, then, you know, you definitely have to be mindful of that. You have to understand what your public perception is. And now it's, it's everything digital. So managing that, you know, through a third party company or software or whatever it might be is the way to go. Yeah, well said. That's so true. And and then once a lot of times once those reviews are up, they are on the internet forever, like you said. Right. right. Um lastly, how if a contractor got a bad review, how would you suggest they handle that? Sure. So um I'll I'll try not to give you a lawyer answer, but it depends. <laughs> so if if it is a bad review that is based on a bad customer experience, you know, you never respond with negativity. You never fire back at the person and say they're stupid or anything like that. You always respond from a customer service standpoint. And, you know, what I always like to say something along the lines of, you know, we pride ourselves on customer service. If you reach out to us, we'll try to make things right. You know, please contact me directly. And, and really what you're doing, it's not so much how you deal with that person. It's the response that others see. Right. So yeah. your future customers are going to see how that response is. Now, if for some reason what is said is false or defamatory or, you know, they they say that, you know, you're a crook or you're a thief or something like that, those kinds of statements are actionable. So there are steps that you can take on the websites where they're posted. You can send a cease and desist letter. And uh, if all of that fails, you can always file suit. That's always a last resort. But uh, again, if it's just a not satisfied with the end result, always respond from a customer service standpoint because it's not so much about that review, it's about everyone else looking at your reviews in the future. Yeah, well said. Well, I hope everyone out there listening and reading this got some good tidbits. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Trent. That was great. And I will be chatting with you next month. Sounds good. Thanks so much.